Well, I thought Audacity was completely broken. It turns out it's just the new file format that they're pushing out that seems to cause some problems. In fact, it's apparently so bad there's now a tool out there to repair a broken file that I can attest doesn't work either. I've had some issues with Audacity lately, but I also today in recording a video about how bad Audacity has become, I found the solution to the problem. And so we'll go ahead and chat about this. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we want to talk about Audacity. As we said, if you like this type of content where we talk about free and open source software and solutions to problems and things like that, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And uh, with that, we are going to talk about this application. Of course, the Audacity package has been sold and then they've been doing a lot of changes. And some of those changes have been bad and controversial. Some of those have been reversed. And I've been struggling hard with Audacity since the latest versions. I'm not sure exactly which version it was, but right now I'm running 3.7 on my Linux Mint 22.0, uh, which is my bleeding edge Linux laptop. Of course, I hold one of them back. I think it's still like 21-ish or something, maybe even 20-ish or so. I have one of them that's a little bit more up to date and I have one that I keep on edge. This allows me to test different software. And one of the reasons I don't like just pushing updates automatically is because things oftentimes break or move and I've had problems with Audacity in the past. Of course I talked about this at one point in time all the macros used to be I think they were on the edit menu and then they moved them to the tools menu without even mentioning it in the release notes. It took me a while to figure this out and I like had a deadline I'm like where is everything? Caused some problems. Of course I figured that out and like a person that regularly uses Audacity for things anyway, I tend to find the solutions. Unfortunately, some of the solutions are the workarounds are not as good as they want. So let me go ahead and move on over to the computer and I will show you what the problem happens to be. So here I have the audiobook files for the, uh, yes, I finally finished it, the supporter story from last month. <laughs> Okay, uh, and part of the challenge I had is getting these files properly processed. And so when I record these, I record them and then I save them as the Audacity file and then I export a backup of the WAV file. And then what I will do then is I will then edit down the file to what it should be. I don't generally save another WAV file backup of that. I save that in the Audacity file. The problem is, is that Audacity files, uh, their new file format, which they just created. Now, they, you used to have an Audacity file, which carried with it a whole separate folder, and there were tons of things in there. Now they've confined everything into a single file, but this file seems to be sometimes broken. Of relevance now, the file does not seem to properly apply filters. So if we go in and I'm gonna use four, in my earlier tests I was doing two, I'm gonna use file four, which I've actually never tried doing the filter testing in four. So hopefully it works here. Um, what we're going to do, oops, I'm not going to double click it. We'll talk about tenacity in a few minutes here. Uh, we're gonna open this guy up in Audacity. And then what we're going to do is when you're doing an audiobook, you have to do some post processing. You have to have three specific elements of your file. Now, we have a plugin for audiobooks to test this. You have to have a peak at no higher than minus three. You have to an RMS normalized between minus 20, uh, minus um, 18 and minus 23. You have a noise floor of 60. You'll see that this file fails on those two levels. Now, the reason I picked this small file is hopefully it takes less time. When I was recording the first version of this video, we actually ran the processes and it took over five minutes to complete. And of course it completely failed. So first we're going to go over to the macro manager. I have two ACX applications here. What these do is these will run the filter curve, RMS normalize, and the limiter. Now the first one is utilizing the RMS normalize plugin that we have. The second one is using the loudness, loudness normalization, which is the built-in tool that Audacity now gives us as of, I think, version 2.1 or something like that. It's been in there for a while, but I was still using the RMS normalize plugin because it worked. 
So what I did here with the plugin, let's edit this one here. We have this set at minus 22. We have our limiter set at minus three. So hopefully everything is well within range. Now the problem I was doing is I've always edited these files and then on the Audacity file, I would apply the macro. The challenge I was having is they would start taking forever and they would fail. So now you can see I ran this file. At, so let's mark our time at 1239 and we'll see how long this takes to run. Okay, so that actually took only two minutes to run. Now the last one was five minutes to run. That file is about twice the size of this. Now let's run our ACX check. This is the file again I have not tested on this methodology because it kept on failing everywhere. This one actually passed. I'm totally shocked. Um, so typically what would seem to happen is larger files, they don't work as well. Presumably there's more stuff for the RMS normalized to figure out and this runs a problem. So oftentimes this thing would fail. Okay, so that one actually worked. Um, when I was running my first tests, I did try part one also worked. Part two and part three both fail. Okay, we're gonna run part two, which is the one that has traditionally given me the most challenge. This one fails everywhere. Maybe the difference is where it fails at the start. So let's go ahead and run our tools check here. All right, so that took about four or five minutes to do. Let's see if this one analyzes. I swear if this thing analyzes correctly. That's the problem I've been getting. You notice the RMS normalization is out of range. So I have been struggling with getting the system to work consistently every time. It's taking a lot longer to process the files. We're getting inconsistent results and the RMS normalization does not seem to be working. Now, smaller files, it seems to work. Now, if the file's too small, it also fails to work. If the file's too long, it fails to work. If it's just right, it seems to work just fine. So what did I find the solution is? Well, first thing people said, try tenacity. Uh, the challenge I had with tenacity is that tenacity is forked off the exact same package base. It has the same problem. I was not getting any issues. So what I was doing is I was taking these after editing them and then I was exporting the WAV file and then moving the WAV file over to the other computer with the older version of, uh, of Audacity and processing them over there. Well, when I was doing the early testing of the system, what I actually found is that if you're not using the Audacity file, but you're using a WAV file, it works perfectly every time. So this is the one that failed. Open up this with Audacity. And the first thing we're going to notice is that with the WAV file opened in Audacity, first thing we notice is the processing occurs exactly the speed I would expect it to occur as the old Audacity file did there. So it's done. That's what took five minutes last time. Now running the ACX check, works. So the solution to running Audacity files seems to be with their new version of their files seems to be the problem. What I'm gonna recommend if you're needing these plugins to work or if you're finding other plugins are not working on Audacity now with this new version as of at least 3.7, then what you need to do is make your edits, save your WAV file, and I'm saving this, I'm just naming this one pre-processed or needs processed, open that file back up in Audacity, run all of your filters, and now that works. I'm actually gonna test this to see if uh, this works in um, uh, in Tenacity as well. Uh, it looks like I need to open that up because I was having the same problem with the same exact files in Tenacity. It was the same issue. So Tenacity is the fork of Audacity that came out when they started to consider adding some uh, uh, some telemetry inside of it. So. Let's just apply this macro. I'm not sure if this macro is set right. I might've been fiddling around with it, but let's go ahead and test it anyway. 
And if it fails, we'll have a look at the macro. Now we'll do the check. So that one is still showing up too quiet, but let me look at the macro settings. So let's edit the macro setting. Let's go ahead and change it to 22, which is actually what I have the other one saved at. So let's undo that. I'm not sure if it undid the file. We're going to go ahead and close it. We're going to reopen it with tenacity. Let's go ahead and check the macro again. Double check everything. Okay, so that's at minus 22. Let's undo. Let's apply this. And let's see if this actually works over here as well. So that one works. So I just change that RMS normalization level down a little bit. Uh, just bring it within that minus 18 to minus 23 range. So if you're using either Audacity or Tenacity and you're having problems with plugins, I think the problem is related to the new file format. So go ahead and save it as a WAV file uh, highest bit rate you can to be as lossless as possible or some other lossless format. Open that file back up outside of the Audacity file and your test of your plugins there work. This is once again why I'm not a huge fan of having these plugins or the the uh, applications constantly changing. This is why I hold back updates a lot. And curiously though, the only applications I've really had problems with have been Kden Live, Audacity, and OBS. The three software packages I really need to make my media industry work. <laughs> They're the ones that have always had the problems. I've not had any regressionatory issues with GIMP or LibreOffice or any of these other applications. It's just these media related ones. Um, but there always are solutions. Again, we solved the OBS issue by uh, that apparently they added a setting and you had to set the setting the first time in order for things to work. And Kden Live, there was just a version of that that was totally broken. So running the latest repository versions, uh, running their PPA um, is what solved that problem. So there are issues with pushing updates all the time. This is why I run Arch so I can test some of these things and also this Bleeding Edge Linux Mint laptop so I can test things. But I keep my streaming computer mostly untouched until I absolutely know everything's working. I have all the bugs worked out because the last thing I need to do is turn that system on and have it not work because some update broke some process and I'm already behind on my schedule. Like today, I started recording this video over an hour ago and I'm just done with it now because Things kept on changing in the process. So anyway, there is my take on that. Audacity, it turns out, is not broken. It's probably just the new file format is. So now I've figured out the process. We can get the audiobooks out a little bit faster in the future. With that, thank you for watching. Let me know any other thoughts you have or maybe even questions you have about Audacity. I'll see if I can solve those ones too while I'm on the Audacity mode. Let me know that in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.